Jarangan literally, mill village, was a name commonly used to refer to an area now part of central Mumbai, India, which at one time had almost 130 textile mills, with the majority being cotton mills. The mills of Jarangan contributed significantly to the prosperity and growth of Mumbai during the later 19th century and for the transformation of Mumbai into a major industrial metropolis. Jarangan covered an area of 600 acres 2.4 square kilometers, not including the workers' housing. The mill workers lived in a community, and they fostered a unique culture which shaped Mumbai at the turn of the 20th century. This textile industry flourished until the early 1200s after which most of the mills were shut down, as the owners deemed them unprofitable and declared they were incapable of paying their workers' wages. Origins The Bombay Spinning and Weaving Company was the first cotton mill to be set up in Tardio, Mumbai, in 1856. A boom in the textile industry followed, with ten cotton mills set up in Mumbai by 1865, employing over 6,500 workers. A gradual increase led to a total of 136 mills being set up by 1900. The textile industry was offered added government incentives in the form of long-term leases some of 999 years, as mills stimulated the economic growth and employment. These mills were owned by former traders like the Tatas, Petites, Wadias, Karimboys, Thakurzis, Sassoons, Kataus, Gokuldas, Cottons, and Greaves. Most of the mill workers came from areas around Mumbai. Kolas were particularly represented. The mill owners housed their workers in chawls built in the areas of Tardio, Baikula, Mazgaon, Ray Road, Lalbog, Peril, Nagam, Siri, Worli, and Prabhadevi. These areas gradually came to be known collectively as Jarangan, literally, the village of mills. <laughs> Life in Jarangan Both men and women worked in the mills. They would start working there at a young age, some as young as 16, and work 12 hours a day from sunrise to sunset until the passing of the Factories Act of 1847 restricted the working day to 10 hours. When the Great Bombay Textile Strike was declared in 1982 by Data Samant, there were an estimated 240,000 workers in Jarangan. 90% of the population who worked at the mills lived within a 15-minute walking distance of them. Most of the buildings were chawls. A survey conducted in Peril in 1921 determined that 27% of the population in Peril lived in rooms with six or more people. These chawls were built by both the government and the mill owners, but neither paid much attention to the quality of the housing. In 1929, one chawl in Dodder was described as being a dark, unwholesome den into which the light of day does not penetrate and which of necessity breathes disease and pestilence. Often the rooms did not have adequate ventilation, and the lack of lavatory and washing facilities distressed the women in particular. The windows were kept closed to keep out the stench of the gutters and to keep dirty water from flowing into the house during the monsoon season. Due to this overcrowding, the distinction between home and street was blurred. Jarangan residents spent more of their time on the street than in the home. There was great participation in communal festivals like Moharam, Ganesh Chaturthi and Gokulashtami. Local shopkeepers and mill owners were often coerced into contributing to such festivals, and adjoining localities competed with each other in the grandness of their contributions. The local liquor shop or gymnasium was a common meeting place. The workers of Jarangan patronized arts like poetry, theater and dance tamasha. Several notable actors first found fame here. <laughs> Peak and decline. At their peak in 1980, the mills employed 300,000 workers. Indian cinema of the 1980s and 1990s frequently drew themes from the life of the mill workers. However, the mills were permanently closed after the Great Bombay Textile Strike of 1982, which went on for 18 months at many mills and triggered the end of the struggling industry, with most of the mills being shut down after the strike. By 2007, only 25,000 people worked in the few remaining mills. Redevelopment 
In recent years, the mills have been extensively redeveloped, many becoming malls and discotheques. The Kohinoor mills in Dadar were bought for 4.21 billion rupees $59 million by Matoshri Realtors and Kohinoor Consolidated Transport Network Limited, companies which were floated by Raj Thackeray and Manohar Joshi respectively. Phoenix Mills, Peril was converted into a luxury mall. In 2005, the government-owned National Textile Corporation auctioned five mills, covering 600 acres, for 20.2 billion rupees $280 million. In February 2009, the NTC decided to auction another nine mills, covering an area of 90 acres, for about 40 billion rupees $560 million. The Srinivas Mills of Lalbagh, covering 16 acres, are being redeveloped into World One, Asia's tallest residential building. Conservation There are conservation efforts underway to preserve the old mills as museums. Such a museum was opened at the United Mills in Lalbagh. A popular play, Cotton 54, Polyester 64, has been written, based on Nira Adarkar and Meena Menon's book, 100 Years, 100 Voices. The Millworkers of Jarangan, an oral history. A festival was organized by an NGO Pukar to celebrate the culture and people of Jarangan in November 2008. Seven mill structures were granted heritage protection status by the government of Maharashtra. In popular culture The 2010 film City of Gold, directed by Mahesh Mandrakar, explores the lives of jobless Jarangan mill workers in the 1980s. See also Redevelopment of Mumbai Mills History of Mumbai <laughs>